Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition and this is the channel where we explain it so you don't have to. This episode we're covering the 2019 adaptation of Pet Cemetery. The film is packed with hidden meanings, changes to the source material and easter eggs that hint to the larger king universe and throughout this video I'll be breaking down everything that you need to know about the movie's plot and ending. This is full spoilers ahead so if you haven't seen the movie yet and don't want to know what happens then I highly recommend that you turn off now. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video for my review of the film and leave your thoughts in the comments if you agree or disagree with me. With that out the way, thanks for clicking the video and let's dive into my ending explain breakdown of Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery opens with the Creed family home in ruins and instantly the film lets you know that this isn't going to have a happy ending. This sets the tone for the movie going forward and we flash back to the Creeds driving to their new family home located on the outskirts of a forest in Ludlow. Isn't it weird how most horror movies start with a family driving somewhere? You've got us, The Shining, The Evil Dead, look next time you want to go somewhere just stop the car, turn around and go back. Anyway, the Creeds are made up of Father Lewis, Mother Rachel, Daughter Ellie, Son Gage and Cat Church who may I just say is the best actor in this entire film. Throughout the film we learn that Rachel is haunted by the death of her sister who suffered from a degenerative spinal disease that twisted her bones and left her bed bound. Rachel's sister Zelda used to taunt her by saying that one day she too would get the disease and this terrified her to the point that she was too scared to take food up to her room. One day when Rachel was left alone with her she sent food up in a dumb waiter however the lift broke and Zelda tried to climb in to get it causing the elevator to collapse and killing herself in the process. Rachel lives with the guilt of this accident and has been psychologically scarred to the point that she is unable to discuss death openly. The death of Rachel's sister and Zelda's clear dislike for her sets up the motif of a deceased family member coming back to haunt the one who caused their death and this plays into the film's ending heavily which I'll get into later. Anyway, the Creeds live near an extremely dangerous road that large semi trucks often speed along with little regard for the homes that pepper the road. There's a lot of foreshadowing of this and Creed who is an ER doctor one day has a patient rushed into his surgery that has been hit by a car on campus grounds. The patient named Victor is pretty mangled with his bones and brains hanging out and unfortunately he passes away due to his injuries. Lewis is haunted by Victor who seems to be trying to warn him not to break the barrier between the living and dead. This highlights that spiritually the town has something up with it and there's ghosts throughout that kind of haunt the characters. On Halloween Lewis finds his dead cat by the side of the road and with advice from Judd his neighbour he decides not to tell his daughter, instead informing her that the cat merely ran away. Judd who has grown close to Ellie tells Lewis that they should bury the cat at night and in the dark hours of the morning the two venture up to the pet cemetery located in the woods near the home. Judd desperate not to see Ellie's heart broken by the death tells Lewis of a place further in the forest and the two go there and bury the cat. The next day Church returns and after getting some bad catitude from him Lewis finds out that the ground is a place located on sacred Native American lands. You can't say Indian burial ground anymore so don't even think it you're racist. Anyway this land is used to bring back the dead and a wendigo is said to haunt there and the native americans ended up having to move because the ground went sour. Now we never see the wendigo but there's definitely something there that can be heard moving in the dark and it's altogether pretty creepy. For those who don't know the wendigo is a major villain in Stephen King's The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon and also the novelization of Pet Cemetery. The Wendigo is a demon worshipped by Native American tribes and it's steeped in King's work and in The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon, a family that go hiking run into the creature. If that book is ever adapted, I can definitely see it picking up with the Wendigo from this film. Anyway, back at home, Ellie begins locking her doors at night so Church can't get in and when Lewis finds the cat in Gage's crib about to attack him, he decides that dead is probably better. Lewis goes to put the cat down but after it gives him Puss in Boots eyes, he decides to take it far up the road and leave it. There are some warning signs here not to trespass and this could perhaps hint that there are other parts in the area that have been purposely cordoned off due to their ability to raise the dead. Anyway, life seems to return to normal for the family and they throw a ninth birthday party for Ellie who still misses her cat. When playing hide and seek she runs near the road and after seeing Church walking down it decides to run out in the middle of it. Gage follows her but he clearly doesn't gauge the situation well and Lewis has to run into the road to save him. Now this is where the movie differs slightly from the original and source material as in that it was Gage who died whereas here it's Ellie. 
Overall, I think it's actually a better choice to have Ellie die, as they do some fantastic makeup effects with her, and with her being slightly older, she's able to talk more and be more of a threatening force. Anyway, Ellie is killed, they hold a funeral, and Rachel and Gage go to stay at her parents. Lewis, aware that Judd will try to stop him if he brings Ellie back, goes over to his house, Cardi bees him, and takes Ellie up to the pet cemetery, where she returns in the dead of night. Clearly she's messed up, but Lewis looks past it due to the grief. Rachel and Gage drive home and pass through Derry, which some King fans may recognise. In case you don't, Derry is the town in which Pennywise the Clown lives, and it's the setting of it. So this is a nice little reference to the larger King world. Anyway, Rachel drives home, horrified at her daughter's return, and Lewis leaves the house to discover that Judd has been murdered by Ellie. They do an awesome fake out on the Achilles heel stab, before bringing it back, and fans of the original will love this callback. At this time, Ellie has went into full rampage mode and she's able to catch her mother off guard due to her psychosis and believing that her sister Zelda is haunting her. Ellie murders her mother, but Rachel is able to pass Gage out to Lewis, who locks him in the car in order to keep him safe. Ellie knocks Lewis out and drags her mother up to the pet cemetery and on her return from burying her is attacked by Lewis who attempts to kill her but hesitates when she tells him that they can still be a family. It's at this point that Lewis is stabbed through the back by a reanimated Rachel and the two drag his body up to the cemetery to bring him back to life. The film ends with the darkest King finale since The Mist with the family circling Gage in the car before unlocking it to probably murder him and bring him back as the undead. Obviously there's a lot to take from this. Personally, I think the movie is a commentary on how grief can cause us to do out of character things that have the potential to lead to our own demise. The family in the film are destroyed due to their inability to accept death, and ultimately this leads to their downfall. They should be embracing all aspects of life, but instead they only want the things that suit them, and in the end this causes them to become part of the undead. Rachel cannot accept that she caused her sister's death and the shielding from the truth throughout the film causes the family's downfall. This is about accepting life no matter how short as a beautiful thing and not trying to subvert it in order to get our own twisted view of what reality should be. As mentioned earlier, the film has several major differences from the book and in that it's Gage who is killed and resurrected. The film also makes no mention of the last person who was resurrected by the burial ground, Timmy Bateman. After Bateman was buried, he came back as a malevolent zombie and terrorised the town folk before they tracked him down and killed him. In the book, Judd believed that a demon had possessed the corpse, as when attempting to kill it, Bateman taunted them with indiscretions from their personal lives. Whilst there are hints that Ellie is possessed by something, this is never fully confirmed. In the book, Lewis returns to the burial ground with Rachel after Gage kills her, under the notion that if he buries her faster than Gage, something better will happen. However, it's hinted that this doesn't change a thing, and upon her return there is definitely a sinister side to it. Lewis also kills Gage with a lethal injection, whereas in the film the family are still alive, if you can call it that. And now onto my review. Okay, so the first question you may have is, is this better than the original film? Well, you'll be happy to hear that I think it surpasses the 1989 film Film in pretty much every way. The atmosphere is creepier, the acting is a lot better, and the narrative changes definitely elevate the plot and make more sense here. The second question that you may have is, is this better than it? Unfortunately not, at least in my opinion. Whilst the narrative is a lot better, the lack of a true villain here really makes it less engaging for me than it was. It feels rather run of the mill story wise and the movie misses out on certain chances to improve on the self containment of the original story. Those who've seen the trailer will probably know the majority of the plot beats here and it's strange that so much was spoiled in the promotional material for the film. There are also certain plot points like Rachel's sister that don't really have any impact beyond being in the characters heads and this feels like a slightly missed opportunity. The film the film is still very enjoyable though and it's definitely worth checking out in cinemas. Obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on Pet Cemetery and if you prefer this version or the original. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoyed this video then please like it and make sure you check out my breakdown of the Twilight Zone's new episodes which will be linked at the end. This is a channel for people who are mad into movies so if that's the kind of thing you like hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.